In this video, I'm gonna share my process for UV unwrapping and applying materials for low poly modular game assets. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. Subscribe now to get game dev tips, tutorials and inspiration and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. I've been experimenting with a modular level design system since I'm working on an isometric action roguelike game. In case you're curious, you can check out my devlogs for the game right here and in the description below. As I mentioned in my previous video, since I'm the only one creating 3D assets for this project, it's important for me to prioritize efficiency while also considering my game design rules. This tutorial is a multi-part series as we have a lot of different steps to go through to complete the entire level. So I recommend that you check out the other videos in this playlist to understand my thought process and my workflow better. You can find a playlist up here and in the description below. Okay, so we'll need to create at least one material for this 3D object. Make sure you select the material um, tab and then this window will appear. And then if you haven't had any materials yet, you can click add new material. And let's rename this to maybe texture atlas so that we won't get confused. We have more uh, materials in the future. And then that's just a material with this base color. What we can do is go to shading. So this is a specific workspace that by default Blender 2.8 has given us specifically for you know previewing our shaders and modifying them and shaders associate closely to materials. So we now need to add the patterns, so to speak, or the texture to this actual material. If not, it's just gonna be a bland, plain, singular color. And right now, if you navigate to the top left here, we can find a file where I've made um, a texture in Photoshop. You can use whatever graphic software that you prefer to create this. And I created something called a texture atlas, which is basically a series of patterns on uh, a single image file. But you won't see any difference just yet. We need to create a connection from the color node to the base node. And then all of a sudden you'll find that there are some patterns emerging already but they're a bit weird position wise. And the reason for that is because Blender or any other 3D software will not know where the information should be placed. Like if you have a green or let's say like you have this red color right here, it won't know that you meant this color to appear on this side or in this side of the model. Like you'll have to tell the software which is the way to map that texture which is why the next process is called uv editing or uv unwrapping so we can have this uh, process done within this uv editing workspace it's a tab here on top of blender 2.8 and then you already see that there's a difference here and the window has changed and these weird looking um, dots and lines over here are representative of the information of this 3D object. So when I select this, let's say this part right here, I can move it around. You don't really see much, but let's see which parts will have more effect to illustrate my point. Ah. Okay, so when I move this piece right here, you can see that the image on the right has changed because it's repositioning based on wherever I move this piece of UV coordinates. So each of these points represent like the actual vertex of a certain part of the model. So it looks a bit weird right now, but one of the best ways to clean this up is to select this object and then press U and Smart UV Project. You can play around with settings here. 
hit OK. And then now there's not much of a difference simply because the object is already in this particular uh, scenario uh, projected by the smart UV object beforehand. And then now we have this in place. You can toggle between these uh, UV selection modes. So it's very similar to edit mode um, right here where you have vertex, edge, um, face, and another special one called island. So island is just exclusively for UV editing window and it can grab an entire group like this, which is pretty handy. Uh, by selecting this UV sync selection, whenever you select something here, it will highlight here on the right side of your workspace. So you can tell that, ah, these pieces represent these highlighted uh, vertices. Even if you select like maybe face, see when you select here, or even if you group select these faces, it will highlight which part of the model is being selected in particular, which faces of the model correspond with these parts of the UV map. So that way, in our case, I only use two colors for the floor tiles. This gray, which is a lighter gray and a darker gray. And it's because you'll see in a moment um, as I speed this up. can arrange objects just like you would in a normal edit mode and scale them down and you place them within their location of the texture that you want to uh, project in the model. So now we can find all the other, in my scenario, all the um, floor tiles would be this light gray and then the bottom part right here, the huge plane would be the darker gray. I find that there's a contrast there that looks um, way better once I have these two colors rather than just one color. That's why I'm going with this decision. And let's just move these around. And I know for a fact that these things would also fall under the gray color. this and then we have these remaining pieces right here they're also meant so the reason why this looks nicer and cleaner in terms of a box or square shape is because it reflects the shape of the model itself like this part of the model is very clean it's like a cube whereas this part was just you know, obliterate it. <laughs> so we move things around and there's a, a lot of lines and chips um, looking effect. So it reflects here and how it looks very disorganized and shattered. Right, cool. So normally I would manually insert seams and um, I would indicate to Blender, okay, cut here, cut around here, and that's one object. Same goes to this one. And then I would also try and cut an edge around here. Uh, it's a process where you call, um, I forgot what it's called, but basically you would mark seams or insert seams to indicate that's where you want to cut. And then when you UV project, instead of using a smart UV project, they will use a normal manual UV project and the shape here will be a bit more organized. You still have to move the little UV islands around and match them based on which color or patterns you want to reflect on the model. But in my game, in this scenario, in this example, the reason why I use just smart unwrap and just uh, bypass the manual process is because 
I'm using a flat color art style and I'm trying to put all the colors within one texture map and some refer to this as a texture atlas. This makes things more organized and every information of colors and patterns are packed into one texture. So I might reuse this gray or this darker gray in other objects later on and it's already going to match with my um, other objects and materials because it's all referencing the same texture. If you were to decide that, hey, in the future, this gray, uh, this light gray, maybe I don't like it, I wanna change it into um, this kind of uh, purple slash gray, I can either move these easily here and see the change. Maybe I wanna go darker on the top. And then when I reassign it to all my materials, all the grays that used to be this color, this tone in my entire game will be changed. So this is helpful when you wanna do a global change across your entire color palette in your game and you wanna experiment with different shades of different colors. So that's one reason for the sake of, you know, synchronizing everything into just one texture file. The other reason is also because um, I don't want to spend too much time creating very detailed textures. If you Google like texture maps, um, you can find that a lot of people use um, color painting kind of style to kind of like, instead of having just flat colors like this, they would have patterns like eyeballs and teeth and maybe indicate scales of a particular creature. Um, grooves and scratches uh, on metal objects and wooden objects. Where else in my game, because the camera is far away and it's low poly style, everything's flat. It's just a flat color. So I hope that makes sense. And there are pros and cons to this style as well. This means that I spend more time creating the details of my models and my objects, like this chip right here, versus actually painting it or using bum maps or other techniques, but that could be a subject for another video. By the way, if you're looking to add more details to your textures and want to save some time, check out Lowly Poly on the Unity Asset Store. They created stylized textures with a hand-painted look. Their mega pack contains more than 250 textures, but they also have smaller packs that are more affordable and some are even free. So you can try them out first before committing to the bigger packs. I'll leave the link to their page in the description of this video. Now that you've got one of these um, examples set up, I'm gonna now move on to the next um, step of the process, which is to export it to Unity. So to do that, I can preview it in layout mode, which is the default mode that um, I usually select to do all the modeling stuff. On the top right hand side here, you have the viewport shading, which um, in this particular example, can toggle between solid. This will help you with modeling. So it removes the texture information and all the colors are gone. This one is called the uh, look dev. So this will give you a preview of what roughly the colors look like and the patterns look like on the model without having additional lighting information. I would suggest it's that you make it a process to actually view it once and rotate it around and see how it looks before you export it out to Unity or whichever game engine you're using. First for me, I would like to select th this entire object and then go to file, export, select FBX and then name it accordingly. So maybe I'll name this uh, floor tile, maybe uh, zero 02, I can't remember the numbers. There's one more setting that I like to use, but um, it's experimental. Uh, I like to select the apply transform what this does is when you import it into um, a game engine like Unity, um, the orientation and the scale is all optimized to be very similar. 
I find that very handy. So otherwise, if you don't enable this, like your axis might not be the same as Unity. The Z axis in Unity is different from the Blender Z axis. I'm not sure why, but it's just how it is. So I find it very useful to use this experimental feature, apply transform. But again, there's a warning here that says that, you know, it may be risky and may destroy animations. But in our case, it's safe simply because there isn't any animations within, within these objects. So we're good to go. And apart from that, uh, you should also select selected objects. So this way, um, it will only export out the objects that you, well, clearly selected and not everything else. So I made a mistake earlier in my previous recording. So now I have to rename this, uh, I guess use the same name, override it. I'll click export FBX. And then from there, it will export to the folder that you have selected. Now, moving on to Unity, I have created an empty um, project here and an empty scene. I've added some folders just to organize things. You can, you know, reorganize your folders however you want. But I have a floor folder and then I have meshes and prefabs as its subfolder. So meshes will contain the FBX and then prefabs, well, later on, we're going to create prefabs out of these objects. So this is where they'll go. And then we're gonna have um, a texture folder and a materials folder. And the reason why they are outside is because as I mentioned earlier, um, at least for now in this current state of the project, I'm using only one material and one texture. And that is the texture atlas we had in Blender just now. So we'll import those as well. So to do that, we'll just um, drag the file. So from the folder uh, that you have set up, I'm just gonna drag this floor tile number two into meshes. And then there you go. You can drag it out to the scene. And it's already gonna have a texture atlas from Blender. But we're not gonna use this. We're gonna add our own material. So go to materials folder and create a new material. Let's just name this um, for the sake of being similar texture atlas. Zero uh, one. Speaking of which, we'll also add the texture file similar to the one we had in Blender. So we'll just drag it into the texture folder as well. And then now, when we have this selected, so we're gonna change this albedo color setting to refer to the texture atlas that we had added just now. Get to texture, drag it to albedo. And then with that selected, you can really see that's like a change here, an update. And then you would select the model that we've added drag this new material on top and when you replace the material you can see it's already adding the texture atlas um, texture map and the color immediately changes in the next video we're going to create prefabs out of the floor tiles and i'll show you how quickly and easily you can lay them out throughout your level and create variety if you want to download the project files from all my tutorials you can do that by supporting me on patreon you can use my entire library of assets for your projects and you can participate in polls to vote on which topics I should cover in future videos. Occasionally, you can even vote on certain design decisions for my game project. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.